Talking about politics, shall we, for just a moment. You might have seen Oregon Congressman Kurt Schrader making some national headlines this week. He was one of three moderate Democrats who joined with Republicans to block a bill to lower prescription drug costs. It was part of President Biden's infrastructure package. Schrader tweeted that he is, quote, committed to lowering prescription drug costs, but didn't think the bill would be able to pass the Senate. So he's proposed a different drug pricing bill with his name on it that he thinks will be more bipartisan. But that's not the only piece of this puzzle here. See, after Schrader voted no, some people on Twitter, of all things, did some digging into his campaign finances. According to the website OpenSecrets.org, Schrader has received more than $614,000 in donations from the pharmaceutical industry as a congressman. They gave him $144,000 during the last election cycle, and that was more than any other industry gave him from, uh, for donations that year. To top it off, Schrader inherited a, quote, fortune from his grandfather, who was a top exec at Pfizer, according to the Oregonian. So you can see why some people think these things influenced his vote, possibly. Well, we reached out to Schrader's office to talk about this today. And instead of just sending a statement, which is what we expected, the congressman actually asked us to interview him. He wanted to give us a response to all of this. We started the interview on Zoom. He's in the car, as you can see. We had a bad connection, so I ended up talking to him on the, on the phone, the old-fashioned way. Here's a bit of our conversation about his connections to the pharmaceutical industry. So there were all of these potential red flags for the average viewer of information like this, somebody reading a quick headline or going through a news report. Sure, sure. No, I get that. Uh, uh, but I guess I would say, number one, if uh, uh, the farmer thinks they're buying a vote, uh, they're getting a very bad deal. I mean, this bill that, that Scott and I are offering, not only is it uh, uh, dangerous for a farmer because there's a chance of passing, but it's more complete and in more in-depth. So I, I, I appreciate people's concern. I, I personally am proud of the work my grandfather did in developing mass production for Pfizer. He saved millions of American lives during World War II. Uh, but that in no way influences the work I do. Why do you think, if you're so tough on pharmaceutical companies, why do you think they give you so much money? I don't know. I, I get money from a lot of different uh, interests out there. Uh, they don't. They never tell you? Labor union. They don't tell you, here's why we're contributing to you? No, they don't do that. That's a kind of common fallacy, I think, that uh, the average person has that, you know, uh, the reason they give you money is to say you're going to vote for this or vote for that. I've never, ever done that. And I don't know many legislators that do that. Uh, what they do is uh, they just want to have access to at least plead their case. Uh, I think most smart legislators like me will get the pharmaceutical groups in to chat their case. I'll get the patient advocacy groups to come in. I'll get the insurance companies and all the different groups, and then you make your decision. It's not like they actually have uh, much opportunity to control what you vote on at the end of the day. Now, this isn't the first time the trader has voted against something that his fellow Democrats have wanted. He's a more conservative Democrat, you can say, uh, than we're used to seeing here in the state of Oregon. So on that note, I asked him about the ongoing redistricting process. Oregon lawmakers here are redrawing this map right now to add a sixth congressional district. And right now, Schrader's district is more purple than blue, according to the website 538. Democrats only have a slight political advantage based on the makeup of voters. So it makes sense that Schrader is more moderate. But here is a look at the new map the Democrats are proposing. This would make Schrader's district much more blue, with more of the Portland metro area included in his boundaries. I asked the congressman if he's worried about getting primaried by a more progressive challenge if this map passes. Well, I get primary at every cycle, Dan. Uh, and I'd like to think it is because I represent the people in my district and the state of Oregon, frankly, which is not a blue, blue state. It's blue on the surface, but as the Oregonian and you guys have pointed out in your newscast, I mean, there's a lot of folks uh, that are Republicans or independents. And I'd like to think I represent this state very well that way. So, sounds like he's not too concerned yet, anyway. By the way, the Oregon legislature is voting on the final version of the new congressional map on Monday. So, if they reach an agreement, we'll know where the new districts are by next week.